So one of the questions was, how do you use the retinal ganglion cell RGC analysis on OCT? And in neuro-ophthalmology, we have really three areas that we are looking at in the OCT. We're looking at the macula, and in particular the fovea, and that's giving us an optical biopsy of the layers of the retina. Then we've got the optic nerve, retinal nerve fiber layer, and that gives us a thickness map of the axons that are in the optic nerve. And then we've got the macula again, but not for the layer cake, not for looking at the layers of the retina, but looking for retinal ganglion cell. And so these three modalities together in OCT help us to understand the etiologies of vision loss. So the first thing you gotta do is talk to the patient, look at them. But after you've done that, if the nerve fiber layer is decreased, that's the correlate of optic atrophy. If the nerve fiber layer is increased, that's the correlate of optic disc edema and especially papal edema. In the macula, if the inner retina is thinned, then we know we've had something happen to the retinal artery circulation. And we can see things that can mimic optic neuropathies, things like macular edema or exudate, subretinal fluid, age-related macular degeneration. All of those are macula problems that might not be visible to the naked eye, but the OCT can see to the micron level unexplained causes of vision loss in your macula. Whether that's fluid, edema, hemorrhage, subretinal membrane, epiretinal membrane, traction, whatever it is. The macular ganglion cell layer is analogous to the decreased retinal nerve fiber layer because it's exome loss versus ganglion cell body loss. But what if the nerve is swollen? Well, then you need the macular ganglion cell layer because you can't rely on the swelling to tell you whether you have death of the ganglion cell or not and whether the person's vision is going to get back. In fact, it can be very misleading because when it's swollen, as it's heading to the red zone and is going to become optic atrophy, it pseudo-normalizes and passes through the green zone. So you pass from the white zone, which is too thick a nerve fiber layer, to the green zone, that is pseudo-normalization. It won't stay there for long and it heads to the red zone, optic atrophy. So that's where the ganglion cell layer is super important because that's actually measuring whether the cells are dead or not. In addition, the other power of the retinal ganglion cell is it can measure ganglion cell loss even if we don't see anything in the fundus or the nerve fiber layer. And so patients who have homonymous hemianopsias might show hemianopic patterns in their ganglion cell. Or if they have bitemporal hemianopsia from a chiasmal tumor, they might show that the ganglion cell layer also shows the same respect of the vertical meridian. So macular ganglion cell layer, really great as an adjunct to nerve fiber layer analysis and macular uh, structural analysis for fluid and edema and cysts and things like that. You need to do ganglion cell layer when you can't rely upon the RNFL thickness, especially when it's going from the white zone too thick to the red zone and is pseudo-normalized in the green zone. And the ganglion cell layer can show us hemianopic patterns, both by temporal hemianopsia and homotomous hemianopsia.